Welcome to Violin Adventures number 105. This is an exciting episode, especially for me, because I delve into this repair and I find a couple things that were very interesting. So come with me as we explore this repair together. Here's our new repair and this violin is from California from a special customer from California who also was a good friend of my mentor, um, Albert Muller. So this is special to work on this violin. I'm going to play it for you and tell you what I'm hearing in the tone. So what I'm going to do now is just check and see. So I'm going to check around on the inside, check the sound post, check the bridge, and just see if there's anything we can do to open up the sound and make it sound better. So this is a very interesting violin to me because this is one that my mentor sold to this customer. and. Looking inside, there's been extensive repairs. On the back side, there was worm damage, and so that's been repaired. I don't know if he did it. Um, we don't know how much repair he did, but it's fun to look inside and see what's going on. There's also, there was a, a big crack evidently in the past along the face bar. And so there's supporting cleats along the base bar and a sound post patch. So there's a lot of repairs that have already be done, been done on this instrument. So now I need to decide what else can we do to make this sound just a little better. Okay, so this violin, we're going to go ahead and open it up. It has just a little bit of roughness in the tone. We're going to see if we can make the tone a little more smooth and a little more mellow. So I'll see you all as soon as I get it open. Well, here's the inside of this violin, and it is very old. The wood is very brittle and dry, which it is from California, so that, that makes sense. But we even have a cleat loose in here. So I'm very glad we decided to open this up. We weren't sure if it was my mentor who had repaired this. And I know right away, no, it was not. Because the um, cleats are not his cleats. So what I'll be doing is removing all these cleats and putting them in correctly. So this is the inside of the top, and it's beautiful work, beautiful repairs, but definitely uh, we can improve the sound. So I'm very glad to see this because I can see where we can improve it. Okay, so we're back at the violin. I, I went over it just to make sure there weren't any unstable cracks, and I did find a couple. So those have been drying uh, before I get busy and take out all the cleats. So I'm going to go ahead now and take out the cleats and see. Oh, yes, I should tap this before I get started. So 
So it's got a little tone, but I think it could have more. Okay, the cleats are out. Now, next comes the base bar. So, We've got the, all the cleats out and the uh, base bar, and I believe this patch is, is too thick, and it's not lined up at all, so it's four and a half, has, it's way too thick. So the rest of the top is, is okay. But this little patch area, um, I'm going to go ahead and remove the patch because it's not done correctly, but I hope it's not just laid on the top and it could be that it is. So we'll find out real quick. Okay, we now have the patch down equal with the rest of the top. So I need to think about this and uh, figure out what we're going to do next. So I think we're going to call it a day and we'll see you tomorrow. Okay, here we are with our California violin. And this is a very old violin. And the repairs that were in here, I found a date. It looks like 1918 or 1919. So these repairs are very old. They needed to come out anyway, and definitely the base bar needed to be replaced. I was debating if I would replace this sound post patch because it is at quite an angle, and but I don't want to disturb the violin, so I tapped it. And the top and the bottom have beautiful tone. And in the middle here where the patch is, it has a dull tone. So I'm thinking I'm going to have to get this patch out. I think that's what's stopping the tone from just being beautiful. So here's where we're at. <laughs> Okay, that was a nicely done patch. It seemed to have contact all the way. That's great. So I'm going to go ahead now and smooth this out and fit another patch. Oh my. This is not wood. They filled the crack with some kind of white substance. Wow, I'm so glad I took this off. This is like a, some kind of cement. No wonder why we have no tone here. Wow, <laughs> I'm gonna take a picture of this. This all has to be repaired. Okay, y'all, I'm taking you up close. Look at that. It's shiny white stuff. So I have got to remove that. That's really going to affect the tone. You can also see over here is something else. So we've got this cement stuff. And then here is something that needs to be addressed. And then you see here there's these dots in the top. 
and I don't know if this is from worm damage. It doesn't really look like it, but why they put these dots in, I don't think that would help the tone. But right now we're going to focus on this and this. Um, replace that with wood and then put in a correct patch. Okay, this is very exciting to me because I know all of this repair is going to really improve the tone. And it's such a nice old instrument with really good tone in the bouts. So we've just got to get that same tone up in here. This is so exciting to me. It's like finding hidden treasure. Because I know that the all these little things that you find are going to improve the tone. So it's very exciting. I don't, I don't feel like it's a waste of time at all. And I'm so glad um, that we found this because this is a major, this is a powdery substance and I don't know how deep it's going to go. Okay, so while I'm sitting here finding this hidden treasure, um, you're thinking about why did they do this and who did this and you know that a properly trained professional is not going to put some kind of cement in the crack, right? That's the lazy man's way. And so who did it? Was it an, was it an apprentice? Um, and then we have to be careful getting it out because obviously when you put in a good wooden repair, it's gonna fit nicely in there. Um, but this is just a quick fix. So we know that there might be jagged edges in here. We have to be really careful, almost like archeology. span <laughs> This is just like digging in an archeological site, a tiny one, not wanting to damage anything as you tear away the soil to get to find um, any precious findings. So I want to carefully remove this cement and I want to get it all out. So while we're investigating, I'm going to check this little round. It's very hard. And if it's wood, it must be either ebony or or rosewood. I'm not sure why they would do that in the middle of a plate like that. And to see if it's on the other side. Oh, it comes through on the other side. Um, so we don't know how much this black here is just to cover up all those repairs. What's sad is it was definitely liquid when they poured it in because it just goes into all the cracks and crevices. Okay. So I'll see you guys after I get this all cleaned up. I got a lot of it. It's, it was very deep. And now I'm going to finish cleaning it up and fit a little piece of wood in there. And then we got to fit the patch. Well, I'm in the middle of editing the video and I had to pop on here and just, I think I was so excited about this repair that I didn't really explain. After I cleaned out the hollow with the white substance in it, I went over next to it on the right side to clean out the next hollow and it turned out to be a long worm tunnel <laughs> and actually twice as wide as the first one that I cleaned out. So here's our two pieces. I've got them fit and now we've got to glue them. Uh, and I'm so excited about this repair because this is going to really improve the tone, especially right here where it's so important. Okay, we're, we've got the glue warmed up. This is nice new glue from our neck reset. So,
Okay, those repairs are done. I'm very happy about that. We'll let them dry for 24 hours and then we'll take it down and put on a patch. Okay, it's time to get our clamps off and see what these little strips of wood did. Okay, it definitely doesn't thud anymore. It has a little bit of tone. So what I'm gonna do next is scrape this and get this all even because the, the little patches are sticking up just a little bit. And I want this all smooth. And I may go down a little bit more because this patch was very shallow. We want a good transfer of sound. So I'll see you as soon as I get that done. Okay, so as I was taking it down just a little bit more, I came across another small area of worm damage. So I am now filling that, well, about three little holes that need some more proper wood filling. So those are gonna dry again for another 24 hours. So we're pushing back our sound post patch. Hopefully that will be the next thing. So. so here's our repair of this top and I repaired these two major um, hollows with wood and then I found some more smaller ones up here and there was an old one repaired here. So I'm going to tap this and it might be next week before we can start on the patch and a peek into our violin There we go, we got our two dowels in. And here we are. All the edges are smoothed out and the corners are cleaned up. So there we go. Then a real quick peek at our viola. Okay, here we are at the viola and look at this huge area for the lower saddle. So if I put a blank in here, it's way too small. Okay, we made a blank here. Here's our little blank and we're gonna glue this in. And I wanna look at some pegs, so let's see what we can get done. Okay, here we are on Friday. It's a beautiful day. The weather is now cooled off. And it's got to be, it may be in the 60s with a slight breeze. Just beautiful. The leaves are just beginning to change. Let's go inside and see what's going on. Here we are inside with three projects going on. As you can see, the wood chips have multiplied since last week. We're just now ready to start scraping the back of the violin getting it all smooth before we start the other side. Okay, here we are with this special violin repair from California. And this one is exciting for me. We repaired the worm damage and then also removed all that chalky cement substance, whatever that was, and put in a nice piece of wood. So the tone is much better now 
but it still needs more strength in here, so we're going to get a patch in there next. And here is our viola. We've got a little bit of progress with fitting the pegs. Next we need to trim the pegs down. Uh, we still need to make a bridge and a sound post and set this up. Freddy's Adventures. Hi everyone, this is Freddy and I've been having fun running around the shop and finding all kinds of fun things to do and I just found this little pump organ. It's just my size. You want to see me? Watch, okay? <laughs> Haluhu Batecha Shofer Haluhu Banevel Vakinor Praise the Lord or praise Him with the blast of the shofar. Praise Him with the harp and violin. Now, this probably doesn't say this in your Bibles. It would say praise with a trumpet, lyre, and, um, and harp. But if you translated this in modern Hebrew, this would be praise him with the harp and the violin. Praise him with the blast of the shofar. And that's what we're going to do right now in celebration of Rosh Hashanah or Feast of Trumpets, which is tomorrow. Thank you so much for watching and for all your wonderful comments, for your thumbs up, and for to the new subscribers. And I hope you all have a blessed week. Until next time, God bless you.